What's good, everybody? This is your boy Chuck Diesel. We're here for another episode of Sake Sundays, sponsored by Sake High, your handmade, additive-free, sugar-free, gluten-free source of alcohol. And we have to say thank you to God's favorite tools, providing this tiger's eye and this AAA protection, and also this toy points we have for our guests. And that brings us to our guests. Go ahead and tell the people who you are. Hi, my name is Nadia Williams. I'm from the East Coast, Silver Spring, Maryland. And I am a dancer by hobby, and I'm turning that into other creative endeavors that are challenging my creative career. What has been your trajectory so far with dance? It has opened a lot of doors for me. Um, I've done a lot of different things with it. I actually did my first documentary a couple of weeks ago. What was it about? It was about uh, women who experienced abortion or some type of loss of a child. Um, and they needed like dancers to express the emotions of that story. Um, instead of using, you know, like hospital details below and stuff like that. Something different. Something different. And, yeah. and I was very grateful to be a part of the process of telling the story of things that a lot of people go through. Abortions and there's things that are real issues. Yeah, for sure. Society, especially with the laws and all those crazy stuff. Like the times. The times. They're crazy. So I was very grateful to be a part of that. But dance really has brought me a long way. It's opened my eyes to see that not only am I a dancer, but I have a lot of other gifts and talents. And you know, I was just born blessed. There's nothing <laughs> wrong with that. A lot of us are born blessed, but a lot of us uh, don't take those necessary steps to really explore how blessed we are, okay. and I'm in that process of taking those steps to really explore how blessed that is. Well, what kind of part are you going to be in that mindset? Um, after I took a break from dancing, um, I choreographed for the first time for a competition for the Yes, I did. I can sound myself now. I am award-winning choreographer. Okay. <laughs> award-winning. That's a big thing for me. No, for sure. But uh, after I won that accolade, that was about a year ago, then I'm like, dang, okay. So I danced, yeah, I can choreograph. What else can I do? So I got into modeling. I was in my first runway show, Chicago Fashion Week, when I was living in Illinois. That was also, that was actually earlier this year, April. Um, and then I'm just, okay, so maybe I can act too. Maybe I can do this too. And I'm, at this point, it's picking up moments. So. Oh, what made you going to act? I just believe I'm a woman of many traits, many traits, and many gifts. So I'm like, what? Well, I can do this, and I can do that. If I can do that, then I can do this. So I don't think things are impossible. Um, but like I have a very charismatic characteristic. It's not the word I was going for, but I'm just like, I'm one of those people who like to get into everything and see if this shoe doesn't fit okay, I'm gonna try this mix it. But everything I've been trying creatively has been fit, so I'm just gonna go with it. Oh, when did you first start dancing? I first started dancing in my childhood when I was about three. My mom put me in dancing when I was living in Silver Spring. And kind of dance? Or it was video, yeah. Ballet. We were doing ballet and we was getting our feet made for our children. So, yeah, I started with ballet. That turned into contemporary, modern. As I moved throughout high school and college, I explored other forms of dance, Afro beat. Got hip hop. Wasn't really that good at it, but now I'm out in LA, so I need to get my pop, lock, and drops, you know, right. So I've been taking classes to be better at hip hop, so I can pretty much do every job. Where are you taking classes? What? Um, downtown LA. It's just so fun. Um, I've been to the playground, which was a very like prestigious studio yeah. that a lot of dance was coming to to get scouted for tours for big artists. So I actually was at a class out there, and. The student, which is a new studio that was built. I don't want to mispronounce her name, so I'm not going to say it. But no, I don't want to mispronounce her name. But the Stu LA. Also, they're placing safe classes. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, what's been your favorite thing about being in LA so far? Hmm. Probably the dance classes. I'm still kind of exploring the area. I do a lot of things independently, so I don't like to venture out into foreign territory you don't know all of this is foreign to me but if i get you've been out here i've been out here for maybe this is coming up in my second oh wow okay maybe yeah i'm baby but 
when I got here, I got on the ground running. Like, I went to the BQT casting call as soon as I got here, and I was able to go to the BQT experience. Um, we have to show this. Go ahead. Open casting call. That was very fun. Um, I met a lot of people there, networks, like basically got here and did what I wanted to do. I said, I'm going to be here, get on the ground running. Didn't really have a plan where I was coming from. It was kind of an abrupt change. So my choice is where to move home or to move somewhere I've always wanted to live. So I'm like, all right, I got my car and I drove here two days from the point. All right, so you're at the Illinois? I was going to meet you there. How long were you out there? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I actually was only living, living there for like eight months. Yeah. But what I will say to that is when you live with someone, it's different than like being with someone. You can have your space, but once you're in the space together with a man, with a woman, then you really see if that relationship's going. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. When is Donna take it dating? But I forget what my desperate question was. Uh, how long were you guys together before you moved in? Um, we were together for three years. Okay. That's crazy. Three years, to eight months. And we were good, but once we got into the same household together, there were things on both sides. Not going to sit here and say, oh, you beat me. No, no sure. on both sides. I'm accountable to that there were areas in ourselves individually that we could still grow, learn from. And then, who knows, we may come back together, but we need some space apart to really grow and learn. Don't you feel? Yeah. I feel like being able to be aware enough to step back from something you dedicated so much time to. And say I need to grow. It's like really big things to get. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I haven't always been able to do that, but at a certain point in my life, when I went to make these big changes and be the best version of myself, I, um, I really realized that you have to really grow through what you go through. You don't have yeah. to make the yourself and you get all the press and oh my God, the world is ending. The world's never ending. Right. The world's never ending. Every ending is a new beginning. So I, and even just, uh, I was telling somebody last night with a uh, slinky, with a ball, with a uh, stop, there's ups and downs. Mm -hmm. But every time it hits, it bounces. And the further you fall, you, you got a bigger impact to bounce off with. So it's like, you just got to ride the way. I would say this has been one of my biggest falls, though. That I'm one of those people who I don't look like what I go through. I don't think anybody has to look like what we go through. But like I said, I came out here, I didn't have a plan. I'm still figuring things out. Probably the lowest that I've dropped. But in the, in the midst of all that, there's opportunities opening and presenting themselves to me that I can't really ignore. These are gifts of God. Like, yeah, I might be going through this, but you still got this seed. You still got that seed. So are you going to show up? Or are you going to give up? And I'm not someone who gives up. Like, I'm challenged a lot in life, but that pushes me to get to the next thing, the next thing. What are some things that help you keep that positivity? Uh, my faith has strengthened a lot. Um, so I go to God about a lot of things, and he, he really pulls me through. Like, my faith, the confidence, and my belief in myself is really what's holding me up right now what's been holding me up since I decided to make these changes. Um, when you talk about your faith and your belief in God, like, where does that stem from? Um, early childhood, my mom, my grandparents, they always forced me to go to church. Yes, I say forced because I didn't really want to be there. It was like five hours long. No, I, hear you. I was sitting in some Five hours long. Why would be here? But, but um, at the same time, I'm grateful because that instilled a level of religion in me, a, le a level of faith in me that I didn't know I would need at this time in my life. So yeah. after childhood, like after I moved out, I actually didn't go to church. I still prayed. I didn't really read the Bible like that. But when I moved out here, um, there was a church that found me. And I'm like, dang. And the church was called The Way. And I'm like, dang, The Way. Mm -hmm. Finding my way at The Way. Yeah. Literally. So they've become my community. They've become my rock on really just praying for me and just installing that faith in me to keep going. And in return, I'm doing the same thing to them by telling them my story. And they're just so moved by my confidence in the things that I'm doing with what I'm going through, the storms that I face at the same time.
So nothing's impossible. So for sure. Um, um, what are some actual like things uh, that you do when you say to like connect to your faith? Oh, um, I pray. I go to church. Um, I'm very spiritual. I think spirituality and religion goes together. Um, but I meditate. Like I really do things to connect to myself. Like I want to hear my thoughts. There was a point in my life where. I was around so many things, so many people, places that were negative, and I would always get just my head. Yeah, my head was never quiet. And when I cut all that out, my head was quiet. I could hear my own thoughts or you get into meditation for your own purposes, and it's really leveled me out. Like, I'm at a place of balance right now. How do you find meditation? Um, my brother actually was big on it. He was more spiritual before I was. Actually, my bad to cut you off with that part. I do still want you to answer it. Won't forget how do you get into meditation, your brother. But spirituality, as we say, spirituality and religion go hand in hand. And some people would figure they're the same, you know what I mean? Or completely Different. opposition. So, like, what are your takes, I guess, on both and then how they coincide? I think my takes on both are everything is connected, number one. And with religion, there's a sense of community when you come together. So that's like, you know, everything's connected to spirituality. We're all connected at some point in our lives. Me and you sitting here right now. Um, and really grounding yourself, being able to talk to yourself, being able to sit and not have all this stuff going on in your brain, like just being in a place of stillness. I feel like that goes hand in hand in religion, because how are you going to hear what God's telling you, what God has for you with you? you don't sit with yourself to hear it. So, I mean, that's how I kind of think they go together, just... So you think spirituality will help you be able to sit with yourself and find the inner quiet and peace, and that is mm -hmm. what religion is about, mm -hmm. quote-unquote, supposed to be? Quote-unquote, yes. I don't really look at it as, I know on the religion side, you know, we're worshiping God or Jesus, um, but I don't really... Yes, I worship God and Jesus, um, but I don't make it to the point where it's like, I'm only worshiping him and all of this stuff. Like, we have to realize that we have a lot of control over ourselves and you got to give yourself credit for, <clears throat> I don't even know how to explain it. Like, yes, God and Jesus deserves the praise, but like, you're the one making these choices actively to get through whatever it is that you're going through or to to make things work like because you're following your, that faith yeah. well essentially we are creators mm -hmm. in a sense like god mm -hmm. so in reverencing our own ability to create we're thanking him for giving it to us so it's like kind of like um in a sense the story of the talents whereas like if you take the talents and you don't do anything with them you get them taken away from you yeah or just in a simpler term, we all have the ability to do and to create and to find joy in it. People who aren't actively building, looking, searching, or trying to learn, grow, elevate, or do that to someone else usually aren't fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Even if they are a level of content, mm -hmm. they're bored. Mm -hmm. So finding that inner creator and giving yourself the okay to actively create is reverencing the power that god has given you yeah and you can't find you can't find that creativity in a room full of like loudspeakers basically to hypothetically put it you can't you can't find your inner self like around people that are just bringing a whole bunch of negativity to your life because then you'll end up stuck and i'm talking from experience like i was stuck for a very long time could not move forward just couldn't figure out why i was in like cycles and cycles and cycles of negative patterns until i was like all right well i'm over this so i'm gonna find a way to break free and i did no it's moving out here no uh a lot of things have happened in my life honestly um but that was like in my early 20s i was living on my own really when i started to sit with myself is when i moved out on my own nobody tells you how hard it is to live on your own number one okay nobody prepares you for that Dealing with the bills, jobs, you might lose your job. Like, 
there were times or one time really where I would leave my house, still do what I had to do, but I didn't have no power. Like stuff like that. Um, I'm good now though. That was, that's some old stuff, but nobody tells you how hard it is. But in all those moments, I was able to really lean on my faith, lean on myself, meditate and really do what was asked of me. Yeah. There's a point where I got to my life and I'm like, all right, well, I'm I'm being moved by God at this point. Like I don't have control over my life because regardless, things are going to happen and I'm going to be moved by, he's telling me to go here. I'm going to go here. Like me even moving here, I felt like I was moved to come here. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to move there. So I drove here and I'm here. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, the other question was, you're halfway into the answer. How did you find meditation? Oh, how did I find meditation? Um, but yeah, my brother, he was very spiritual before I was. When he got or connected more spiritually, because I wasn't always spiritual, I also probably got into that in my early 20s as well. I used to look at him like, he's delusional. I don't know what he's talking about. What, what was he doing? I mean, he would. He likes to be connected to the earth. He meditates, like stuff that I didn't, I didn't know anything about meditation. So instead of being knowledgeable about it, I wasn't really judging him, but I was just like, he's delusional. Like he's in his own world. Like he would speak things over his life that he wanted to happen. I'm like, well, they're they're not happening. But it's like, who am I to question his dreams, goals, and aspirations? But that's when I was still kind of in a negative mindset myself. So once I was kind of alone dealing with all of my issues, I would kind of think back to him. I would talk to him about these things and he's like, meditate about it. And I, at first I wouldn't do it. And then once I started to do it, I'm like, okay. There came a point where I, when I first started, I would call him and tell him, I don't know how to meditate. Like there was so that was about to be my next question is like, how, was... explain how you meditate. It's like a lot of people were like, I would meditate, but I don't know what to do. Or exactly. I tried to meditate. I don't know if it worked or if it's working. Yeah. So yeah, in the beginning, I did not know. I thought I didn't know what I was doing, but it was working. But it does take a little time because when I first started to sit with myself. You got uncomfortable. I got uncomfortable, number one. There was a lot of voices in my head. They were all saying negative things, calling me negative names. Or, But this is all because I was still around people that were negative. So it's almost like the things that were be happening behind my back were also in my head when I would try to sit with myself. Um, and then once I made that executive decision to start chopping people off left and right, I don't care how long I knew you, you've got to go. And I you know, meditated still through that. There was nothing in my head. Yeah. There was no voices. There was nothing negative. It was quiet for the first time since I've been alive on earth. I found a peace sitting still with myself. Yeah. Like, dang, well, now that I found this peace, I don't want nobody coming near me who can disturb that. I feel that. Mm -hmm. I hear that 100%. Like, I probably was your brother to some people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I won't say. My 20s. It's like, <laughs> Partially, the reason I ask questions like around spirituality and religion, mm -hmm. I was raised in church saying, get there at nine in the morning and we not leave until two, three o'clock. Like, why, why are we here? Like, we would have a <laughs> prayer, a worship, a Bible study, a worship, <laughs> a word, yeah. and then a sermon. And then we would end with offering and a worship. Mm -hmm. and everything I listed took at least 20 to 30 minutes. Like, and so that was my childhood, over 10, 15 years of my life. Mm -hmm. By the time I was 16, I didn't go to church as frequent, mm -hmm. but I was still in there at least three Sundays every month. Okay. And probably at least once or two days out the month for mm -hmm. Bible study. And I have read the whole Bible. Like, did I sit there and read it, like take notes and chapters and everything? No. But I read the Bible, a different chapter, Every time I went to church, since I was able to read, okay. oh, that's from six years old, nah, seven, seven, eight years old, mm -hmm. I was late on reading from my school. It's like, I didn't know how to read more than like two, three letter words, period. I could tell you what they were because I remembered them. Mm -hmm. Once you spelled it out and told me it, I knew what the words looked like. Mm -hmm. So I could get through stuff fine. Mm -hmm. But if you gave me new words, I'd sound them out awkward <laughs> and so once i got it mm -hmm. i read everything everything what did you take in from reading the bible like did you read it and just it was another book to you or it was just a book 
then yeah because i was a kid mm -hmm. and so it's like certain things i knew the word but i didn't understand what they meant and like context there was no context mm -hmm. and some of it i would just get mad because i'm reading the king james bible mm -hmm. so i'm just like i have no clue what that meant but as you got older did that start to come into context for you and so now i sit and talk to people about the bible without thinking about it and the bad thing is i remember all the stories from the bible and now that i'm older i can draw context like that okay. but i can't always tell you where it is mm -hmm. or what it is but when it comes to just an overall understanding of the book once it came to expanding and just opening up my viewpoints on stuff the connectivity of how you said things are created is like i can read something about greek mythology or romans and boom i think of something in the bible or if you just think about the fact that the united states our government structure is built off of the government structure of the roman empire right and the roman empire just took over the egyptians right and so if you think about that in a historical context with also the fact of religion having started in this area but the roman empire has nothing to do who were the romans what did they look like versus the people who are in egypt you feel me and so it's like this is all just interesting to me because we want to talk about the people in the bible we could talk about israel and palestine right now but who's going to say what about it is up to anybody's debate because we live in such an argumentative state about everything. And so for me, I just sit outside of everything and put it back in the Bible and be like, dang, bro, even genetic modification was in the Bible. Like, what are we talking about? Oh, <laughs> that's how I look at it now. But having grown up underneath the Bible so heavy in a religious context, once I got to a point of like understanding everything is everything, like this box, contains the same elements as this shot glass contain the same elements as the light right here as your skin does i was like bro this is crazy what are we talking about we're all just energy exactly yeah. and so once i understood that in a sense where i could ask questions to people who taught me and i knew it transcended what they were thinking i knew it was time for me to stop saying yeah i'm a christian and i belong to a non-denominational sect of christianity it's kind of bigger than that exactly it's way bigger than that and it's like do i believe in the bible yes do i believe that jesus was preaching the right words yes can i tell you that i stand behind what any christian pastor is saying in the pulpit i don't know that man <laughs> i can't speak for him that's a, that's a good there, there you go yes and if you want to sit down and talk about who jesus was as a character and what he stood for let's do it if you want to compare the story of Jesus to like Muhammad and Buddha, let's talk about these principles. You feel me? And then talk about the time periods in which they live because Buddha lived before Jesus. So how could he be blasphemous for not following the way that didn't exist yet? You feel me? So it's like people get mad at people for not following their religion, but they don't understand their religion. The other person's predated theirs. So why don't you see a connective tissue? And then explain why Jesus came afterward. You feel me? It's like, I can go for it's hours. It's not as black as white. It's, it's not. not as black and white as people make it seem. Exactly. So yeah, saying I'm a Christian doesn't mean that, I mean, I, I've been going to church more frequently now, but it doesn't mean that you need to go to church. Like, you just need to have a connection, your own personal connection with God or whoever it is that you worship. That's, it's like the word, that's what religion is. The church is the body. You feel me? Like, ecclesia is what it was actually called and it had nothing to do with a physical building and they say we are the body of christ meaning we need hands we need feet we need legs we need arms and the head does not hold the same vicinity as the feet but the feet carry the movement forward and the head is helping the feet move and thinking about the whole picture so it's like who's to say who's the head and who's the foot it's not my job but i will play my role and then if i end up where i am who are you to say I'm not in position? That kind of goes into me kind of saying that I feel like I'm being led to do certain things because, yeah, I have the head, but it's like, or my feet are moving in a certain direction, but it's like in my head, I'm getting, 
I don't even know how to describe them. They're like inklings to just thoughts. Things. Yeah. Thoughts. But I know that now that I'm in a place where I'm not receiving negative thoughts, it's that it can't be bad. Yeah. Yeah. So if I get a thought to, oh, go to that class, I'm going to go to that class. I should follow this because there's nothing in my head right exactly. now that isn't what I want exactly. to be doing. So it must be right. So that's why I feel like I am being moved. And throughout this movement, I just want to encourage other people to really sit with themselves so that they can be moving their own life, whatever that looks like to them, too. I'm oh, for sure. That's something else that I like try to say and promote to people. But at the same time, I'm just real wary because it's real easy to get misled and led astray mm -hmm. with how much information there is. Mm -hmm. And with the fact that we're just saying a lot of things are connected. And like sometimes people will just jump into the everything's energy, everything vibes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, cool, but now connect that mm -hmm. to more. You feel me? It's like, yes, everything. Hmm. Oh, no, I was going to say something. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to segue off of that is that once you become, I don't even know how to describe it, there's a certain level of Aware? Open. awareness. There's a certain level of, aware of awareness where you can know sitting in a room with someone, you can discern whether they're kind of compatible with you. And I'm not like saying romantic wise, I'm just being mentality wise, whether they're on the same level as you mentality wise, or if they're just kind of going off the things you say and making it seem like they're there, but they're not. So I've been, I've been able to really like intuitions heighten, discernment heighten, everything. I can sit in a room and just feel the energy in the room and be like, mm, I don't need to be here. And I will leave. Uh, literally I was somewhere this past weekend and I walked in and I looked at the person I was with and I was just like, within about 40 minutes, I was like, yo, bro. And as I was saying that, he was like, yeah, we're not going to be here long. And then I was like, cool. I'm so glad you said that because I didn't want to feel bad. Yeah. It was like, I had no reason to want to leave. Yeah. But I walked in, I did a quick, and like, I was like, I don't know how to explain it, bro. But usually I go into places and I feel some inkling of, oh, talk to this person or maybe I should, you know? Yeah. Or not even dip, but like something in me doesn't say leave. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I walked in, nothing in me said anything. Mm -hmm. It was just like, oh. This is a big sigh. And I was just like, hmm. Okay. And then when he said he wanted to leave too, I was like, thank you. I thought I was about to sound like a dick because I don't see any reason to be here right now. And the event has like four hours left. <laughs> like, I think that's like your level of awareness, your discernment. You were reading a room and the room just didn't seem like a room you needed to be in. It was just dry. Like everybody's energy was just dry. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of people really aren't aware. They are not self-aware. They don't have this level of awareness that they really need to operate positively in life. So they're they kind just, of just float. wandering around. I don't want to say float in like a negative connotation. Yeah, no. But just in a, I'm doing this and I'm doing this because this is what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, uh, I control the atmosphere and environment around me. I can make decisions in my life to alter any path in my life right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, even if I choose not to, knowing that you can is just empowering. Yeah. I'm just always kind of moving and leading with love. But there's a lot of people that they don't have that love in themselves to, yeah. to move with it. It takes a level of self-love to be able to give love. Because yeah. you can only give something you've experienced. Yeah. And so if you don't have a real appreciation for yourself, mm -hmm. you don't feel the need to appreciate anybody else because you're dry all the time yeah that's great that you say that though because i i did not have no love for myself until i was like 23 maybe 24 so it took me my whole life to learn how to love myself what do you think like helped with that meditation number one really did meditate <laughs> really, freaking meditate but on a serious note like what really helped with that was acknowledging that I had issues within myself that I needed to fix, that yeah. it's a heal. I need to find the root and I needed to go after that root, not attack it, but it's either I'm going to let you know about yourself and I'm going to let you know that I'm going to move on, I'm going to move away and be forgiving. Like all this stuff really triggered me to start loving myself was forgiving myself, number one, being accountable and forgiving other people. Just kind of knowing when to let go of things and really 
analyzing where the root of the issue is and going after that and kind of severing ties with it. Like what taught like, you accountability? Myself, my time alone. And it's like, I really learned all this by myself, by going through all these storms back to back to back to back. Like I had really bad years of my life. Years. <laughs> I don't mean to lie, but it is, you stress the ass. You can laugh about it. I can laugh about it now because I'm not even connected to who that person was who was going through that because I'm at a place now that's so positive, that's so light, that's so peaceful that it's like, I don't even know who that was. No, for sure. I don't know who that was, but I'm grateful that I went through these things to be now in a position that I can really sit here and tell you that I was once this way and I'm now another way. And I just, I see life differently. Like I shifted my whole entire mentality of how I thought about myself, of how I thought about what I deserved in life. And things just went up from there. They went up and while they were going up, I really did try to encourage people that I had to leave behind. I, I tried to encourage them on the way, on me, on, on the way of me exiting certain people's lives. I had to, I had to just let them know, you know, it's love. I wish you the best. Like, it's no hard feelings. Why do you feel like you had to let them know? There were certain people I had to let know because you just can't be letting people play with you. Like, people are going to do, people are only going to do to you what you should Yeah. And I was allowing a lot of shit to slide. No, I hear so that. when I was reflecting, I'm like, okay, hold on. You're getting mad. Like, I was because yeah. I was allowing these things to go on in my life. And my intuition, my gut feeling exactly. was really all I needed to know. Yeah. Like something's off about you. I don't know what it is. Something's off. Um, and uh, my intuition from there just kept going up, up, up. I'm like, all right, well, it was almost to a point where it was unbearable. I couldn't not listen to it anymore, and yeah. I have to cut people off. And yeah. I ended up cutting off everyone I ever knew in my no. early adult life. No, I hear you in a certain sense, especially just because, like I said, I'm out here by myself as well. And Independent shit. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm out by myself. I, in a song, I said, but what did I What did I say? <laughs> oh. Oh, you can catch me in the spot. One deep, at least you thought. But the father and the son is always on my watch. <laughs> I, I like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like, I always say I'm alone, but not lonely. Oh. That's. Because I'm never actually alone. We never are. And... But mm -mm. everyone that I would see on a regular basis from the time I was incepted <laughs> until I was 20 five i haven't seen it in two years and it's like was that on purpose no was it necessary for me to be here right now in this exact space yes you know what i mean or i would be back home and it's like no shade to anybody it's no it because it wasn't changed. because i was doing anything against anybody or you know what i mean it's just you do what you do inklings of oh i should go here or this is what i want to do this is what i think i should be doing and doing it, and then life just unfolds a certain way. It does. Yeah. And it unfolds in such a magical way, too. You don't, get, like, guess, expect. Like, what you're saying, like, I just feel led, and I'm saying it's led by God because why am I here? And people ask, like, oh, you've been out here for X amount of time. What's your experience been? And I'm like, sheesh. I can't even tell you. It's like, I just Living life, man. go. Yeah. Like, even when it gets bad, Still it's going. like, similar to you, actually, this is the first time I'm ever saying this on camera. Okay. I lived with somebody for the first time, and it was not the business. Not what you expected. It was The thing is, I went in with no expectation. My expectation was, I don't think I'm going to be here long. <laughs> like, I went into it with that in my head, which is already a negative, mm -hmm. but circumstances type life. And also not taking control with the I am the creator, you know, a situation happened, somebody said something and I rolled with it. Like, all right, bet, let's do that. Okay. I didn't even think about what's my next best move. <laughs> he just took a suggestion mm -hmm. and placated myself for six, eight months. Was that your best move? No, but, but you learned from I that. learned so much. This is one thing I will say. I never take anything as a negative because even the person that I was in the situation with, minus everything that happened between us, just watching them operate showed me a level of power that we all have within us. A lot of power. 
that we don't take hold of because we're in a situation where I was helping with something I could have been running and allowing myself to get played. Mm -hmm. Literally knowing before it even happened, I was like, I bet that at the, by the end of this, I get cut out completely. So happened. Exactly. Kind of already knew. I already knew it. Woke up one day, the content was just gone. Deleted off my memory cards. <laughs> like, what are we talking about? And so, I just say that to say, through all that, you would never know. You would never guess. I learned that I could start something, be in charge of it, and command a crowd as long as I believed in it. Yeah. Because, like I said, I was qualified to do everything this person was doing by myself. Mm -hmm. I had it. I didn't even think about it. You feel me? So it's like sometimes you need to go through things and feel do. inadequate. You to be like, bro, what am I doing? Let me pick myself up from this place of feeling small. Because no one's life is perfect. Oh. And we have choices. We have the choice to be the victim of these scenarios and situations or to be a teacher. So. And to learn a new lesson. Sometimes to be the teacher, you have to learn the lesson. You can't see somebody. That's not a sometime. Nope. That's, that's all the time. Yeah. If you're a teacher, you are actively learning lessons every day. Something might slap you today. Something might slap you tomorrow. But you you know what? At the end of the day, you know you're going to be okay. And you can kind of analyze the situation and be like, well, maybe there was something in that I needed to learn. I feel like you also have to want to do that, too. You do. Because a lot of people you just do. take the status quo and stay where they are so they don't have to meet challenges. That's that. That's that choice. And that's what we're. I was trying to get to by the floating, where it's like, okay, this is okay. Or we're here for now mm -hmm. and never really looking towards the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that kind of goes into like victim or the teacher. To be the teacher, you got to put in that work. You got to make those hard choices, decisions, and you got to learn from the things that happen because things are always going to happen. Say another shot. Yeah. All right, let's switch the combo to some more up tempo. Yeah, we can do that. Cheers. To what do you think has been one of your biggest successes? I got some options. But I'm going to stick it to the award-winning choreographer. That was a very big success for me because it was the segue into exploring the other creative efforts. What was the choreography for again? It was for a competition team. This was back when I lived in Baltimore. Um, I did the loan for three, four years. Um, <clears throat> and in that time, I was finding myself, finding what I like to do, finding what I could do. But um, I will never forget the lady who I was working for after we won. Um, she was kind of talking to me. So I was telling her a little bit about my journey. And she knew that I wasn't going to stay as a choreographer, that I was going to probably do other things, travel. Like I wasn't going to stay in Baltimore. Um, she told me, You are here inside and and she told me that you were watching my work. You are watching something I created. And the judges all loved for a piece. I wasn't in it. I was, there, I was teaching. They were like, okay, you were school age girls. Um, <clears throat> that's been my biggest achievement so far. And my second was Chicago Fashion Week. That was my first time ever modeling. And I like, okay. How'd you like it? Um, I loved it. I like, yeah, I would model. No, I'm saying, would you model full time? Yeah, we're not right now. Yeah, we got things to do. I hear you. Places to go, places to be. Um, like, <laughs> yeah, it was just because me being a model is not just being a model, we're creating and walking. Being a model is like, I want to be that model who leads by example. The fact that you can do anything you put your mind to. What's your favorite thing about the whole modeling experience? Um, probably. The people that you meet when you do things like this, you meet a lot of cool people, like a lot of people that are either maybe on similar, a lot of like minds. Yeah. And um, that's really all I wanted out of life. Once I started to find myself was to meet people that also had like minds and that were on these endeavors for themselves. And everyone's journey looks different. It was so interesting how there are moments that we came together and it's just like, this is good. Oh, nice. nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. So. 
that's where my best part and still my best part to these days meeting all the other creative faces who are choosing to put in that work to chase their dreams. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's work. It's not no easy. It's work. It's knees and elbows. It's work. Like, it's no joke. Uh, I think I already asked your favorite thing about being in LA, right? Yeah. I'm still finding it, though. Besides the fact that there are endless opportunities with abundance, endless opportunities to be seen, I'm still finding it. Actually, I do have a question, because I, I saw the first time I saw you dancing was with Will, the Will, the Space Kids Uzi mm-hmm. in the background. Mm-hmm. How do you all know each other? I met him at... Oh, the casting? He was at, actually at the VET experience. Okay. I was casting. The building was so big. It was like two different things going on at once. But the casting took like two days. Right. So on the first day, I actually didn't get to audition. And I just moved to the experience side of it. And just started networking with everybody. And uh, I met him there. And there was like an after party. I think I saw him there too and we kind of just chopped it up all each other to sit I'm like, all right, this is cool. You got your music going for you. Like I said, like, there's a lot of creative people there. I love that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's like I fit right in. <laughs> in my own little way, but yeah. Everyone's confident within their own abilities, not judging the next person or talking down on the next person because they're too focused on themselves. So oh, for sure. I love that. Well, what are some tips you'll give? Like three tips you'll give people for that right now. <laughs> um Tip number one is to be confident in yourself and not feel like you can't go up to somebody and talk to them because you never know that person that you talked to could have connected you with someone else who opened the door for you to do something else. Yeah. So it's having that confidence to really put yourself out there. Tip number one. Tip number two is to be yourself. Like, don't feel like you got to conform or fake or be someone else to get someone to like you. If they don't buy with you, they don't buy with you. There's more people in the world. Um, Tip number three, I was supposed to have fun. Have fun is a big one. Have fun. Get this is fun head. stuff. Yeah. You don't need to be in your head. Like, this is fun stuff. Like, you are all put here. Everything is connected. The right people will find you. And have fun. Like, I think that's one of the biggest tips for myself. Yeah. Is to just have fun in the yeah. space. Mm-hmm. And, like, one thing that I think I was watching a video and they were like, if you want to, oh, I think it said to be like just more approachable and like charismatic, stop worrying about being, you know, that person. Mm-hmm. Instead, just enjoy yourself. enjoy yourself. Because anyone who is thoroughly enjoying themselves just has an energy about them. And it, it's, it's one that attracts, I've noticed. But not even just, oh, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say, um, it's like I said, like we're all energy and like you're just vibing. Like there's gonna be people that you don't like you. Yeah. You don't need to give it don't it doesn't matter. Who cares? I don't yeah. know who you are. You're not doing anything for me, you're not paying my bills, you're not doing that. Yeah. So if you don't like me, I'm not gonna die. But it's like having that that looks about you is gonna I don't know. For me at least in my experience, it's made me have this energy that just attracts. And it doesn't only attract positive it doesn't track negative but i got this term and i got intuition so i know i already know coming in my space six feet back because i already know like, you could just tell who's good for you and who's not at a certain level of awareness stop this for uh what i was about to say was uh maintaining the idea of finding reasons mm-hmm. to enjoy yourself would make you have to be interested and curious about what's around you and once you do that, you're already outside of yourself because your attention is almost in front of you. And if you're looking for things to be curious, that means you have questions. Yeah. And if you've got questions, somebody else probably has exactly. questions. And that makes people interested in you. And it's like, oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Once you, so it's like just a two-sided thing. It's like instead of focusing on yourself, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, you came outside for what? To either have fun, to learn something, or to enjoy yourself. So why aren't you doing that? And if you're worried about how, Find something interesting to you and focus on that. Let everything else worry about itself. Yeah. And the dominoes fall and they feel like everything is kind of aligned in such an interesting way. Like, I, I can't speak to other people, but it was for me, things have been just unveloping, unveloping so much. And it's just blessings after blessings, and I can't help but be grateful for 
who I've been, how far I've come, where I'm at, and where I'm going. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I'm excited. Oh, no. I'm excited that you're excited. And my motto is the rose that goes from concrete. Because I am the rose, and I did grow from that concrete. Right. So, no matter what was trying to be put on top of me, no matter what was going on in the background, no matter what, I still grew, grew from that. And uh, I can't wait to like to share my wisdom with everybody through my work, through my voice. Well, I have a voice too that, you know, we're blessed to you, so use it. Word. So with that, uh, I said thank you for checking out the episode. Uh, go ahead and order your sake today, drinksakehigh.com. And go ahead and get your gemstones. We have amethyst, we have quartz, fairy quartz, crystal quartz. That's some turquoise Tur- with a turtle on it. Tur- oh, God's favorite jewels.com. Check us out. And until next time, I'm steady. Bye.